Over the past few weeks, I've seen both on YouTube, in my video comments, and from viewers on my stream, a common notion that the Okamura boss fight is very difficult. Personally, I don't feel this way, as I've never really struggled with it. Still, it's undeniable that others are struggling with it, so today, I wanted to give some tips on the fight as well as showcase two Persona that make it an absolute breeze. But before we get into the video, I do just want to remind you that I stream most days over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash rosalindgaming. You can find a link in the video description below. I've also done a fair number of videos covering Persona 5 Royal and all of its systems, so in case you're interested in that as well, I will leave a playlist link in the video description as well. The Okamura boss fight will see the player pitted against waves of enemies of increasing difficulty, all while a timer is counting down at the top of the screen. Each wave consists of one enemy type, and for all waves except for the last two, consists of enemies you've fought throughout the palace. For the most part, these waves shouldn't be much of an issue. Okamura will occasionally give the order for one of the enemies to self-destruct, in which case you either need to hunker down and guard, or finish off the wave that turn. Otherwise, you generally have about two turns to finish off each wave after which if you have not finished the enemies off, they will be replenished by new, fresh, full HP versions. Finishing one enemy off and leaving the rest alive can also lead to all of the enemies being replenished, but this generally shouldn't be a concern. Another instance that can cause the wave to be replenished is if Okamura gives an order to have them target one of your party members, and that party member happens to not be there. This can actually be used to your advantage if you feel you won't have the damage one round or you need the time to recover and set up. Just rotate out the member who is targeted, and you will have a free turn of receiving no damage at the cost of the enemies essentially being fully healed. Not ideal, but something to keep in mind. Once each enemy in a wave has been finished off in the same turn, the next wave will come, and this will repeat until the end of the fight, which consists of 8 waves total. Wave 6, 7, and 8 consisting of just one enemy. Wave 6 is easily the most difficult part of the fight, and pits you against one giant enemy that has no weaknesses nor resistances. Wave 7 will have you face Cognitive Haru, but the only thing you should really be worrying about here is staying topped up and keeping any defense down debuffs removed from your team. Okamura will give her the order to self-destruct, but so long as you aren't debuffed and are at full HP, this really shouldn't kill you and you don't even really need to guard either. Wave 8 is Okamura himself, but he basically falls over dead to even a slight breeze. However, while doing all of these waves, he will occasionally be buffing the defense of some enemies and lowering your defense, so it's best to have a plan to deal with this. With that brief explanation of the fight out of the way, let's take a look at some of the things you can do to make the fight easier for yourself. The obvious thing is to try and be hitting the weaknesses of each enemy and making use of baton pass. You can use items to help create longer baton pass chains, but outside of hard mode, that really shouldn't be necessary. Once or twice is more than enough. It's also possible to apply status ailments to the enemies in this fight, with Dizzy being particularly effective. This is important because it opens the door for dealing technical damage, which, assuming your party's technical rank is rank 4, allows for additional ways to down enemies and bypass enemy resistances. Equally important is to make sure you are removing debuffs off of your party, specifically the defense down debuff that Okamura frequently casts. The single biggest mistake a player can make with regards to this fight is simply not removing debuffs. It can also be a good idea to have a way to remove any buffs the enemies put on themselves as well and having a way to lower the enemy's attack, especially against Wave 6, will definitely go a long way towards keeping you alive. Speaking of Wave 6, when Okamura gives the enemy a special order, it will use a massive AoE attack on the following turn. Make sure you have lowered the enemy's attack, and you are guarding or you risk dying, especially on harder difficulties. Of special note, if you happen to have the Hunger debuff on you, which can be applied by Okamura or the Wave 6 enemy, you will actually be healed by this attack. As for actually dealing effective damage to the Wave 6 enemy, stick with physical damage. You can deal magic damage, but he has the ability to cast Makarakarn on himself which can be annoying. He can also be inflicted with the Dizzy status ailment, just like the rest of the enemies, and you can also critically hit him. Making use of this can allow you to down him and baton pass to another party member for increased damage. Alright, we've gone over the fight and taken a look at a number of tips to make it easier, but what about the party I recommend to actually accomplish this effectively? Well, I recommend On and Makoto. On provides the ability to lower the enemy's attack with Matarunda, which is especially good on Wave 6, and she can remove buffs off of the enemies with Takaja. The reason I recommend Makoto for this fight is for the sole reason that she can remove the defense down debuff off of your party with Dekunda. When not doing that, she can also help out in the healing department. Now you can certainly have Joker do any of these things, 
but with the persona setup I will be showcasing after this, he will be your primary damage source, so I prefer to relegate these tasks to my party members. For the third slot, you can really use anyone. Both Haru and Morgana hit enemy weak spots in multiple waves. Morgana can provide more healing, whereas Haru can do some nifty things with Tetracard by casting it on a party member who has been selected by Okamura. You can also swap with Yuji in during wave 6 for more damage against the enemy if you feel you need it. Either way, the last slot is really up to personal preference. And now for the two persona that I make for Joker that really trivialize this encounter, Dekarabia and White Rider. The Dekarabia that you see here can hit every element except for Frost, and has the Relentless Persona trait allowing for 50% increased damage to weak spots. Making it is incredibly simple. Fuse a Stone of Scone Treasure Demon which can be found in Futaba's Palace with a Niki Matama, and then pass down all of the single target magic skills as well as the Relentless Persona trait. To remove its weakness to physical, you have a couple of options. If you've completed the Mementos request against the Cheater, you should have a Null Physical Skill card. If not, you can use the free DLC Persona to pass it down. Izanagi Picaro learns that at level 25, and Kaguya learns Repel Physical at level 22. You could also try to find it on the Fusion Network if you wanted. The next Persona that I recommend is White Rider. Triple Down will be your main damage source, as it deals a lot of damage in the Okamura fight. Even the enemies that supposedly have a resistance to gun damage seem to take full damage from it. White Rider naturally learns Gun Boost at level 40, and you can itemize him into a Gun Amp skill card while under a Fusion Alarm. Charge can be passed down from a number of Persona, with the earliest being Satanta, who learns it at level 25. You can also get a Charge skill card from doing Mementos requests. The easiest way to get Apt Pupil during Okamura's Palace would be from Bicorn, who learns it at level 8. As for White Rider's Persona trait, you ideally want something that increases damage on Baton Pass, as things such as Striking Weight don't increase gun damage. With these two Persona, your general flow of battle with Joker will be to use Dekarabia through the multi-enemy waves to either kill them or knock them down, and then to switch to White Rider and use Triple Down. If you ended your last turn on White Rider, then try to down the enemies with free teammates and Baton Pass back to Joker. For the Wave 6 fight, you will almost exclusively use White Rider, rotating between Charge and Triple Down. If you happen to score a critical hit, just use Triple Down again for extra damage to downed enemies. And that's really all there is to it. As long as you are making sure to remove debuffs from your party and using the two Persona I just showcased, then the Okamura fight should be very easy for you, and the timer will be a non-factor. Just make sure that you guard against the big attack on the Wave 6 enemy on harder difficulties. If you found this video helpful and informative, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, if you have any questions, you can feel free to ask me in the comment section below, over on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash rosalindgaming, or on my Discord, which you can find a link to in the video description. Until next time, take care.